I had a really weird dream last night. But I'm not gonna tell you what it was about. Let's do some tech news! Wait, the light is, what, was, what, was, what was it? There was a Twitch leak yesterday. Oh, what was it? Twitch. Yeah, yeah, but what leaked? Twitch did. Yes, the whole thing. <laughs> yesterday, an anonymous 4chan user posted a torrent for a 125 gigabyte file containing the entire source code for the Twitch website, its various apps and SDKs, and internal red teaming tools designed to test hacking defenses, which I guess uh, <laughs> didn't work. Hey. Twitch confirmed that the breach took place, but didn't confirm the legitimacy of its contents, which also included payout information for literally thousands of streamers showing the top creators were earning many millions of dollars per year, which may actually be an underestimate since it doesn't include income from multi-million dollar exclusivity agreements. And this is leaving viewers who thought that their favorite streamer was, you know, also a member of the proletariat absolutely shook. Who's gonna be in the revolution with us? But perhaps the most interesting part of the leak is an unannounced game store intended to compete with Steam codenamed Vapor. <laughs> Get it? Cause it never came out? Anyway, change your Twitch password, everyone. Wait, what? No, hey. Steam, Steam Vapor, Water Vapor. But also Vaporware. Yeah, cause sure. Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger has declared that AMD's win streak is over. Okay, he didn't quite say it like that because Pat's a nice man. He wouldn't throw that kind of shade. Get him, Pat. But he did let loose some Flanders-esque fighting words in an interview with CRN. Gelsinger says that Intel won't dismiss them of the good work that they've done, but that's over with Alder Lake and Sapphire Rapids. Man. Won't dismiss them of the good work <laughs> they've Anyway, these code names refer to Intel's upcoming mainstream and Xeon CPUs. Gelsinger also besmirched ARM's progress in the server processor space, saying that Intel is going to make sure that ARM's role there stays minimal. Dang, it's more like Pat Gelt Zinger. Hey, hey. Hey. The comments from Team Blue's leader hit the web along with a social experiment video where Intel tricks Mac lovers into loving Intel PCs instead, which, to be fair, is pretty easy to do when you're paying them for it. Them were pretty good. And yes, Microsoft officially launched Windows 11 yesterday, beginning a new era for the PC. One that seems to be defined more by hardware requirements rather than major software features. That is, unless you count the myriad bugs and performance issues that many users are running into. AMD has said that they're working on a fix for a bug that is causing their CPUs to run slower. Systems with Intel's killer networking are experiencing drops in speed and failure to load for some websites and games. A memory leak bug seen in the pre-release builds has apparently survived the launch process. It's like a, it's like a memory leak uh, cockroach. It won't die. <laughs> and we're still waiting to see whether that nasty VBS feature is gonna cause massive performance drops in game performance on pre-built computers. Of course, many users are also reporting that their new Windows 11 installations are running fine, just fine, and we're as happy for them as we are for the surviving members of the Squid Game. Spoilers! How is that a spoiler? Yeah, did people die or survive? Oh my God. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. The point is, it's probably gonna get better. And if it doesn't, what are you gonna do? Switch to Linux? Yes. Yes, yes I will. Let's switch to the uh, Riley qu things that go fast. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Signal RGB, the free app that syncs RGB lighting across your entire setup with zero compromise. Because installing a separate app from multiple brands for each component in your system, which then don't even work together, is... <laughs> I mean, I'm getting frustrated just thinking about it. Signal RGB supports over 300 devices from Razer, Corsair, Asus, MSI, Aorus, EVGA, SteelSeries, and more. And with a pro license, you can make your RGB equipped devices react to in-game events from supported games, mirror what's on screen to match the ambiance, and even react to music for a synced up light show. So many colors. Download Signal RGB for free at the link below. Could you have ever imagined there'd be this many short news items? Valve has released a video telling people they definitely should not open up their Steam Deck and replace components themselves because they could break their device or even die. Then they show them how to do exactly that. Not the die part, the open it up part. It's kind of the best of both worlds, really. You know, now I just want an Apple video doing the same thing, except it would just stop after the first part. 
Don't open it. And that's it. Cineverse, a company that routes SMS text messages for hundreds of carriers worldwide, has said that somebody had unauthorized access to its database from May 2016 to May 2021. For five years. For, for five years. <laughs> U.S.-based carriers have so far said that there is no indication the breach led to messages or personal details being compromised, but wow, five years is a long time to just not do anything with access to that kind of sensitive information. Here's a cookie, don't eat it. But hey, we're not just telling you this to raise your anxiety. We're telling you this to let this be your semi-regular reminder to not use SMS for anything, <laughs> but especially two-factor authentication. Yeah. It's it's bad, but don't but also don't don't panic. Trust Facebook. Google has proved once again that they are serious about making YouTube Music a good music app, and have finally added background listening for non-premium users. Five years. Wow, we got a theme today. Five years after they launched it, and a whole year after they killed its predecessor, Google Play Music, which had the same feature that they're now just adding back into YouTube Music. But wait, it's only in Canada. Wait, what? Wow, we got something first? Nice! All is forgiven, Google. Actually, not all is forgiven. Play, Play Music had a feature to just natively cast my yeah. Sonos stuff, and, and Google and Sonos, they're feuding, and they, they won't fix it, so I'm going to, I'm going to Spotify. They're a bunch of hosers. Samsung's upcoming mobile processor with AMD's RDNA 2 graphics will reportedly support ray tracing, according to a post on China's Weibo social media platform. We can't imagine what mobile game would warrant taking a frame rate dip like that in order to have fancier reflections, but hey, we said the same thing about PC games, and now basically every gaming PC in the world has ray tracing on 100% of the time. Yeah, now, right now, it's it's a paradigm shift. And Nintendo revealed the final character joining the roster of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's Waluigi, is who it should have been. Ah. Ha, got you. But instead, it's actually Sora, the Keyblade wielder from the Kingdom Hearts franchise, which is really sort of relevant right now. Uh, and I can't say I've ever played a Kingdom Hearts game, but I, yeah, it's still cool Sora's in there, uh, but, What's next, SpongeBob? And that was the final story, so come back on Friday for more tech news. You wanna know what my dream was, by the way? Oh, what? It was that I was not gonna do the tech news today, but now it, I was afraid of telling you about it in case it didn't come true, I but then- I thought you liked doing the tech news. It didn't come true. I thought you loved it. Did I say dream, I meant nightmare. Oh. I love doing the tech news.